Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues. Companies that have the potential to change the world are often born in a dorm room or a garage. But to take on the global market, great ideas need to be tested first. And that's why we're here today. My name is Johanna Stralla. I'm a journalist at Estonian Public Broadcasting, and I'm happy to welcome you to the launch of Test in Tallinn program here in the unicorn capital of Europe. Now, there are tons of arguments why Tallinn is probably the best place for tech companies who want to scale up. We made a short video that captures the essentials. Got an idea and a product that you want to share with the world, but you need a place to test it? Meet Tallinn, Estonia, the unicorn capital of Europe. But that's not all. You're wondering, why Tallinn? Let's look at the facts. Tallinn is the capital of Estonia, and we're known globally as the digital country. Our environment is great for testing new solutions. You can set up a company online here in 15 minutes. We work closely with universities and companies, which supports the development of your product. Sustainability and the green transformation are both essential to us. You might think we're a small country, but it's a benefit. We're flexible. We adapt easily. Our people are friendly and open-minded, eager to use new digital solutions and incorporate them in their everyday lives. And finally, Tallinn is the birthplace to many global business giants. Think Bolt, Wise, Skype, Verif, to name just a few. If Tallinn sounds like the place for you to test your innovative product or service, read more at tallinnovation.ee. Tallinn, the city where the future is now. Dear friends, to give you more details, I'm pleased to hand over the floor to the Mayor of Tallinn, Mikhail Gulvart. And should you have any questions to the Mayor, uh, you can write them down to the live stream comment section. Mr. Gulvart, the floor is yours. So, dear, dear colleagues, um, dear friends, um, uh, I believe that uh, all good things uh, uh, starts from the idea, all projects, um, all new systems uh, and uh, structures. So if we talk uh, about our project, uh, Test and Tallinn, and you ask me what uh, is the idea, so I have to say that actually we have this idea. Even I, I can say that we have a geological base of uh, this uh, project. And uh, first of all, we have a very clear understanding uh, that uh, today uh, public sector decision making have to be, must to be uh, knowledge basis, science, science basis. It means uh, that uh, we need more partners. Uh, we, we need uh, uh, more partners in the academical uh, field and we need more uh, partner, partners with businesses. Uh, second uh, uh, understanding is that uh, today uh, we understand that uh, in the 20th uh, centuries uh, uh, progress uh, technologies uh, in big scale destroyed environment. In the 21th centuries, uh, uh, in uh, nowadays, uh, according to nowadays understanding, uh, technologies uh, can and must support environment. That's why Test in Tallinn is one of our uh, important uh, projects uh, of the European Green uh, Capital uh, Program. And the uh, third understanding or idea, so if you ask me what is the role of the public sector in uh, cooperation between different uh, sectors, between academical sector, between businesses, uh, what is our role? What we have to do? And uh, uh, for my understanding, uh, our duty is uh, to create environment, to create possibilities. Uh, it's maybe even uh, more important than to find resources. 
So by the creating environment, uh, uh, by the creating regulations, uh, uh, by creating the platform, uh, we give uh, uh, the base for the new ideas and for the new activities. And uh, this is uh, uh, the role of uh, public sector. And uh, uh, Tallinn, uh, as a public sector, now want to create uh, the new environment, uh, new platform for cooperation between uh, different sec sector, academical sector, businesses, uh, startups, uh, uh, and the public sector uh, uh, as a Tallinn city. And uh, I, I believe that, uh, first of all, this is a, a very symbolic place uh, to start with our project. And this is a very symbolic partner, what we have now to start this project, Technopol. Uh, because this is not only a symbol of cooperation between the state, university and the city, this is a system of cooperation and system uh, of synergy. Because for my opinion, synergy and cooperation cannot be chaotic if we want to have result. It uh, must be systematic. And uh, uh, our uh, biggest aim uh, to create not only uh, interesting project uh, for the European Green Capital Year, in the future we want to create also a new system of cooperation and new structure in the Tallinn city government. All together. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Today's event uh, is hosted by Tallinn Science Park Technopol. It is the largest science park in the Baltics where more than 200 innovative tech companies have already um, taken their home base and are operating from here. And uh, tens of startups are also preparing to take on the world. Now, uh, I guess there's room for more, and I'm pleased to hand over the floor to the CEO of Science Park Technopol, Indra Korov. Dear Mayor, dear journalists, dear partners and guests, the mission of Technopol is to support world-changing technologies and new innovation, and we work with this idea every day we cover a full range of services starting from uh, offering office space to the company, co-working spaces, laboratories, areas for testing. Uh, we also provide, if a company joins our program, we provide a personal mentor, area experts. Um, we provide with, with training, offer contacts with first payable customers and even involve investors once the companies and the product is ready. Speaking of testing, this is a very crucial phase of every company, especially companies working with technologies now, and in order for a product or technology to be ready, you need to test it several times in order to make it safe, to make it correspond regulations, and ultimately, of course, to have all the functionality to fulfill the expectations of of the market, the clients, the society. Uh, we in uh, Tenopol have 20 years of experience of working with so many companies and seeing how important this testing phase is to learn from the mistakes, to change the business model or the, the technology. And uh, it is so important to be able to test it in a smaller scale, like in a science park or in another controlled environment before in entering the bigger world so what we see is that the first step is testing it here, then offering it to Tallinn, to Tallinn environment and buildings, for instance, and then go to conquer a broader world. And this is the model that works. Uh, I just wanted to mention also that we have had very good cooperation with Tallinn City, for instance, uh, through a program called Tallinn Innovation, and we have helped several companies to uh, not only to test, but to implement their technologies in Tallinn, uh, in, in the city environment, uh, as regards, for instance, uh, gathering data or measuring uh, road temperature or 
uh, energy efficiency of buildings or whatever. And I can certainly tell that Tallinn is a city who has very open mind towards innovation, who supports new ideas and visions and is always supportive in at least trying to implement new approaches, new technologies in the city. So what can we say? Please come to Tallinn, test in Tallinn and see where it takes your business. Thank you. Thank you very much. We now have time for questions, and questions can, can be asked several ways. As I already noted uh, in the beginning uh, of today's event, you can post questions directly to the comments section, uh, wherever you're following the stream, be it Facebook Live or YouTube, and uh, uh, those questions will then reach uh, my tablet, or we can do it the old school way. So those of you who have come to uh, the event here physically can just raise your hand, uh, make yourself visible, and I will then ask a question either from the mayor or from the CEO of Technopol. And if they don't know the answer, there are people in the venue who know all the technicalities should you uh, be curious in any of them. So, I don't see any questions right now. I'm going to use my privilege to ask something on my own. So, um, perhaps from the mayor uh, first. Uh, and could you please join me here on the stage? Uh, actually, Indrek, you can also come here so you can uh, uh, be uh, a good backup uh, for the mayor should I get into more technicalities. This... Um, this phase, this program, Test in Tallinn, isn't uh, focused on the full domain of uh, technology as I understand it. What are your focus interests? Uh, uh, which kind of companies are you specifically looking at? What solutions do you want to see? Uh, actually, we are open uh, for all uh, technologies, uh, what we can implement uh, in Tallinn, but uh, we have also some priorities uh, for, for the project, project Test in Tallinn uh, this year. Uh, this is uh, uh, mobility, energy, uh, energy efficiency. So uh, all uh, those topics are very actual today. And um, of course, uh, again, we talk about the European Green Capital Year, so uh, we want to see uh, also in the uh, city room, uh, new technologies. So, as I said, we are very open. Uh, Indrek, uh, we know there are already companies operating in this field, also here in Technopol and in Tallinn. How would you characterize the competition and how much space is there really for more innovation and for new players to, to step in? That's a good, good question. Philosophically speaking, innovation never stops, so <laughs> there is always room for newcomers. And uh, there is always places to try new technologies. There is always buildings that need to be renovated, need to be made more energy efficient. And even though we see, like in this energy efficiency field, that there are many, com not many, several companies offering almost competing uh, systems and technologies, I think they have all enough space on the market and in the testing area. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, we're receiving questions uh, from our audience uh, in, from the virtual domain. Uh, the, the next question is for Mr. Gulvart. Uh, uh, how many startups are you expecting in Tallinn and what's the KPI for this project? We don't have uh, any uh, number as an aim uh, because uh, uh, this is not the uh, only project for us uh, uh, during uh, uh, European Green Capital Year. Uh, actually, uh, we hope uh, that it will be our future. Uh, our aim uh, is a long-term uh, system so that it will be possible to use uh, Tallinn as a platform not during one year but uh, stably in, uh, during the uh, long term. And uh, so that's why we don't have any concrete number. So uh, everyone over the world is uh, very welcome in Tallinn. So no key performance indicators that would indicate whether the program has been successful or a failure? 
Uh, no, we don't have uh, uh, this number. This is uh, this is the answer. Yes. Well. Uh, what do you think, how many newcomers uh, can, uh, can this uh, facility here welcome uh, within a year? You have more than 200 companies already operating here, 35 plus startups in your startup incubator. I mentioned you probably have room for more. Is that so? Yes, exactly. To be honest, of course, many of the companies who already are in our startup incubator, they also test their products and they also will one day become a good partner to Tallinn City, but um, and we have had like the same project that I mentioned, Tallinn Innovation. Uh, we have managed like five or ten companies in a year, uh, and in these projects, the quantity is not uh, the target so much, but um, to get most out of out of every uh, new uh, implementation, every new uh, development, so that the company will be happy and satisfied, and the city and um, the country as a whole will be mm -hmm. happy with the new technologies. So the quality is what matters. Well, I s it, it, it can yeah. be many different uh, projects uh, and uh, we see uh, on the uh, city room picture some different new ideas. Uh, it's, uh, it's great uh, uh, to have uh, very various pictures, but in the same time, if uh, we will not have these various uh, uh, picture, but uh, we'll have one very big uh, project uh, what we can implement in Tallinn. So because we have one more uh, idea, it's not only about testing and creating the platform, it's uh, about also uh, choosing uh, the most uh, uh, interesting, uh, interesting technologies uh, uh, for implementing in Tallinn. Mm. Uh, dear audience who are following us uh, from your homes and offices, if I can kindly ask you to post your questions to the Facebook Live that would make our life here in the venue much easier. Uh, but before we take on the next questions from the audience, perhaps we could clarify uh, what do you expect from companies who want to scale up in Tallinn. I mentioned good ideas emerging from a dorm room or a garage. Is that enough that I, I get a crazy idea as a journalist, uh, I want to try it in Tallinn, I come to you Indrek and uh, you provide me with everything I need to make that idea livable or do I actually need to be already in some sort of progress with my company and have a product that is usable? That's a very good question in what phase the company needs to be. We should check the rules first, of course. Um, what I would say is that, uh, as far as, you're, as, as I remember from the concept, you, you would prefer, preferably need to have a company ready and the product ready. It's not just a crazy idea that I can if, come to If you, to if you had an idea, then there is exactly our incubator, for instance, our accelerator programs that can turn this idea into a fully operating company in like six months and uh, then you would, of course, go on to uh, offer this technology on the market. Mr. Mayor, would you like to clarify that? Yeah, if it will be your crazy idea, we will test it in Tallinn. Oh, well, thank you, thank you. That's a great personal uh, approach but, uh, there. <laughs> I think, uh, I think uh, uh, this is a question of, uh, of the system. So we have like uh, uh, different clusters, uh, as my colleague uh, said. If it's just idea, so you have to work with idea and uh, to, to prepare this idea for, uh, for the testing. So if you, for example, uh, a big company and uh, you have a new idea, but this idea is uh, tested and uh, maybe implemented somewhere, and you need uh, to test it uh, also in Tallinn, for, ex for example, for your portfolio, it's also good uh, if it's uh, interesting for us. Mm. Mr. Mayor, can I ask a personal question? What is, what is it that you would like to see personally in Tallinn as, as a mayor or also as a citizen? What do you miss? What can technology actually provide us? What kind of companies would you like to see operating in Tallinn with innovation? Uh, as a mayor, uh, I want to see, uh, first of all, changes uh, in Tallinn city system and structure. Uh, 
So uh, this is on, not only a project as an aim, this is also a tool uh, to create a, a new uh, system inside the city government and also the, uh, the structure. So if we have more tools uh, uh, to create uh, uh, synergy and uh, horizontal cooperation, uh, so it means that uh, uh, Tallinn city government will be more efficient uh, in the future. So, and this is one of the tools what we want to, to use. But of course, uh, we want to have also uh, the results uh, for, uh, for the citizens and uh, uh, for, for Tallinn. Today is the uh, most uh, actual problem uh, and the topic, uh, as, we all, uh, as we all know, uh, this is the energy energy sources, uh, new energy or alternative energy sources and uh, energy efficiency. Energy efficiency is something that we will look at uh, with one of the companies already very much operating in Tallinn in a second. But before we get to the actual companies presenting their services and products, a last question from you gentlemen. So how do, you, how do, a, how do we begin? Like, What is the first step? Uh, where can a company find more information about this initiative and what should they do if they find it a good idea? Yeah. So actually uh, we have uh, uh, this uh, uh, package of uh, information. Uh, we have uh, the first structure uh, to, to start uh, with the realization and we have a good partner. So uh, we have like uh, different steps uh, for implementing uh, or for developing this, uh, this project. Yes, exactly. There is a website ready, talinnovation.ee, and a, ref, uh, a summary of the terms um, of the, or the concept of the project. And then I absolutely recommend to visit also the website of Science Park Technopol, where there will be references to the terms, as well as more information on where to start, where to come, who to contact. Great. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, an applause. As the mayor was so kind to offer me uh, Tallinn as uh, a test base for my first idea, I definitely need to go to my bedroom or my garage and start finding one. But there are companies who have done a good job, uh, a way better job than me, and have uh, already chosen Tallinn as their home base because they actually have a product or a service ready. Now, what are these companies doing uh, and uh, why are they here in Tallinn and how far have they already reached to conquer the global market? Time for some presentations. And we will start from RA Technologies who have developed a clever tool to save energy in complex buildings. Dear uh, guests, dear uh, mayor and uh, CEO of Tenopol, uh, dear online guests also, my name is uh, Allan Hani and I am Chief Operating Officer in R8 Technologies. What do you think? Would it be uh, nice to have uh, more time and money available for your everyday business and operations? Everybody is nodding here. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Ari Technologies has developed a solution where you can achieve this very easily. We have a product called Ari Digital Operator and it can help you to achieve in commercial real estate indoor climate with minimum costs. So maybe this our product can now talk about itself. So Please, let's launch some video. Did you know that 40% of global CO2 emissions come from the real estate sector? Hello, I am Jenny, R8 Technologies Artificial Intelligence. I was created in a property technology company for operating across the world from our headquarters in Estonia, Europe's Silicon Valley. 
I optimize commercial buildings' energy consumption, and this will help them to save energy and money, and our planet. My artificial intelligence is based on the knowledge of thousands of engineers and my goal is to use that knowledge to benefit your building. Healthy and productive indoor climate is a top priority in modern commercial buildings. I know how to achieve it, and, most importantly, I can do it for your building as efficiently as possible. In the first phase, I integrate with the building automation system. I start by reading and analyzing the building data to benchmark and understand the building based on three key performance indicators, energy efficiency, indoor climate comfort and improving the technical condition of the building. I then automatically adjust the heating, ventilation and cooling settings to optimize indoor comfort levels and energy use 24-7, every 15 minutes if necessary. As a result, thousands of monthly intelligent enhancement adjustments are made to your building automation settings. The more complex the building, the better results I can achieve. I serve many well-known international real estate owners and operators worldwide. In particular, commercial buildings, such as shopping centers, offices and hotels, value my support on their journey towards more sustainable operations. I make thousands of micro-adjustments per month, resulting in indoor comfort levels of over 90% and energy savings that can be 30% or even more. I also help to achieve global sustainability goals by reducing CO2 emissions. Don't forget that indoor climate comfort is priority number one for building occupants. It is also my top priority. I'm learning every day and getting smarter as my portfolio grows. So, what makes me unique? Well, I bring you measurable real results by reading thousands of data points and micro-adjusting all the necessary HVAC components to synchronize the systems as a whole. This is how I ensure that rooms are always heated and cooled at the right time and in the right amount. Plus, you don't have to make any investment, install any equipment, or go through painful training sessions with me. There's no reason to wait. Hire your first digital employee to increase your sustainability by reducing CO2 emissions and lowering the operating costs of your real estate portfolio in these times of high and volatile energy prices. Please contact info at our 8tech.io. Okay. Thank you very much. We have a limited time of three minutes uh, to ask uh, all representatives of companies here. So raise your hand in the room or uh, post your question to the Facebook Live uh, uh, comment section and we can uh, go ahead. While there are no uh, questions coming in, um, oh, there is one question from the mayor. Oh, very go good. Ahead, Thank you. <laughs> There's a uh, microphone also for the mayor. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, thank you uh, for your interesting presentation. So as I understand, you have um, a solution for the new buildings with the new uh, operating systems. Uh, for example, in Tallinn, we have some municipal buildings uh, with the old system. Do you have uh, solutions for those buildings also? We do have a solution for, yes, as you said, for the new buildings. And uh, there is a need that in the building there would be like building management system which points together all the different kind of equipment in the building. So what, what we have uh, actually done with our portfolio companies in the world is uh, that we have actually divided the buildings into the three packages. First package is the one which have already the modern systems and we can connect the buildings very easily. Those are the buildings which have like upgrades from 2015 or retrofits and uh, newer. Then uh, the second package could be something uh, which are the buildings which have the, do have this PMS system again, which uh, have been uh, installed uh, between 2005 to 2015. And the older buildings which, uh, which are there, they need to have this PMS installation. But I would give you one example, for example, Pax Margareta, our, uh, our... Fat Margaret. Yes, this can be. It's, it's, it's a building. Current, it's currently under the, uh, under the digital operator uh, uh, 
control, so it is uh, achieving quite good results there. So, those of, you, <laughs> those of you who haven't met Fat Margaret, it's a middle-aged building in Tallinn, Old Town. So, can be modernized with uh, yeah. a contemporary digital solution in climate, indoor climate regulation. So the idea is uh, that we, if we install into the buildings uh, uh, equipment which uh, ensures the indoor climate for the people, it can be already like uh, controlled with uh, modern algorithms which uh, are getting the inputs from, for example, the energy prices, the occupancy, and also it takes into account the weather predictions. So we know that, okay, it's getting warmer outside it and, and it takes it into account already. So. And also Thank the energy, energy prices, not to underestimate this value. Thank you very much, Allan. We have exhausted our precious time here on the stage. An applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Now, those of you who have joined us physically and who came here to the building probably saw a cute little bus outside. Uh, this is made by Alvatec, who specializes in autonomous transportation systems. Alvatec, the floor is yours. Test, test, very good. Uh, dear mayor, uh, guests, friends and partners here, uh, my name is Johannes Mosso and I'm CEO of Avetec and I will make you a really fast, short introduction what we do and why we do. Similar as from R8 technology, we push on the emissions because this is a really measurable KPI for us and where we show that uh, why these kinds of uh, new technologies in the transport uh, is uh, needed. So one-fifth of global CO2 emissions is, is by transport sector. And also second thing that uh, the urban mobility itself, you have a lot of personal vehicles, a lot of room in the cities are taken by personal vehicles and we are seeing that we have a solution for that. Uh, what we provide? Uh, we provide uh, last mile transportation with autonomous shuttles uh, in open traffic, uh, closed areas, but also in some cases an only mile transportation, which means that you don't need a middle transport, for example, as an express bus connection, which is usually for last mile, you can just get to the nearest marketplace uh, just with our vehicles. And we are doing the vehicles for the early adopters uh, of innovations at the moment and step by step uh, growing. Uh, why we different from our competitors is that we are at the moment doing a lot of things by ourselves, uh, which helps us to make faster developments, faster changes to the to the client and, and really be as flexible uh, as possible. And also these vehicles are uh, produced just uh, beside of, of uh, Tallinn uh, city. We have done a lot of uh, different uh, proof of concept projects and also commercial projects at the moment, mostly in, uh, in Europe, but step by step uh, going outside, we are now present in the Middle East and also in April in, in Japan. And uh, well received by many uh, famous uh, passengers uh, around the world, uh, who many of them has been a first time of, uh, of driving with autonomous vehicle uh, overall. Uh, this couple of pictures of our new generation vehicle, which we just came out, and we are seeing that this is a next step for us, which is technologically a lot more advanced, meant to be produced a lot more, and is really meant for doing an uh, autonomous transport uh, uh, in, the, in the middle scale. Uh, we have a lot of competitors around the world and we are seeing that we are not in the OEM level autonomous uh, vehicle uh, sector like you have uh, Google cars and so on and we are seeing that this low speed shuttles is a totally different uh, sector. Uh, we also are doing live connection to our vehicles, we can take over control of the vehicles uh, in our offices and uh, just one main point to Tallinn, it's not just that we have a lot of really good partners in Tallinn. Everything which can be coming from the air, is it wind, is it snow, is it water, is it dust, it's everything and every different uh, weather condition. And this has given us a real possibility to go around the world, that we have an area where we can test in every different routes and, and also weather conditions. Uh, 
one just point to the hydrogen vehicle, which is, in our opinion, a really important step for the future, where we are also investing and, uh, and coming out also. Uh, so that's all from me. Thank you very much. While we are expecting questions from the audience, uh, may I just go ahead with one? How would you characterize cooperation with Tallinn? Uh, what has it really given you? Uh, one thing I said, we have had many very good projects, commercial projects, like we have had in Mustame, uh, which uh, has been one of our best projects overall, in a, in a sentence, how many passengers we have carried, and really showed that there is use case, especially older people living in the area, and really showed that there is a really good use case. Uh, and as I said, different scenarios, like uh, Tallinn Airport at the moment, uh, we have residential areas like Ismustame, we have suburban areas in Kakkuma and so on, which has really given us a test field to understand what the client wants and where it suits the best. Mm -hmm. Do we have any questions from the audience? Yes, we have there a question. Go ahead. Yes, uh, my question is about uh, what you mentioned earlier about uh, self-driving being a hyper-competitive space. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would like to hear more about where do you see Avitech fitting in this uh, sector? So, uh, we're really seeing that we are in this uh, pre-mapped areas, which means that the technology is a little bit different. So, we're usually in one smaller area, which is about maybe five kilometers in size. Uh, and in low speeds, this keeps the development costs down and also really possibility that this is already usable now as an autonomous transport, not in 10 years. And that's what we are seeing from our competitors like, uh, like Google Car, which has said, with the higher speeds, the development costs are going exponentially high. And, and we're seeing that this solution in, in the next 10 and 15 years is just going to be too expensive. And that's why we're seeing that in this sector, there's really a possibility to do it already today. We have also a question from our online viewers. When can we see autonomous vehicles in Tallinn city centre instead of good old school public transportation? We are seeing that our idea is not really to replace the public transport uh, with the big buses. We are seeing that they are still needed as an, as an uh, long distance connection points, for example, between districts uh, around Tallinn. But inside the strict, uh, district to provide uh, an end service for, for the vehicles, it's really important. And we are really seeing at the moment that, uh, especially in the low-speed vehicles, year 25 in the, in the global world is really the, the main point which we are pushing on uh, to, to scale and, and get better in things. So. Thank you very much. If we don't have more questions, I guess time is up so we can move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ivy is using smart tech to capture detailed conditions of road networks. Now, how do they do it and who is it good for? You will hear from them. Go ahead. So, hello everyone. Uh, dear guests, online visitors, my name is Artyom Melnikov and I'm product manager in IV. Uh, I have my, our system here also to show you. So, IV technology is artificial intelligence uh, powered data management platform for civil engineers. Uh, we provide uh, scale, uh, quality scale data for uh, infrastructure management. And uh, Tallinn was ideal place for us to test our technology. Uh, it uh, enabled us to compare our data to the data that the city already had. And this helped us a lot in expansion to nine different countries, uh, and uh, including United States of America, where we have uh, all, uh, one uh, office right now. And uh, to explain what IV does, uh, I would like to show you a video about this, so enjoy. IV offers an on-demand mapping software service powered by artificial intelligence. This means rapid and efficient data capture of road networks. We use the most advanced high-resolution imagery and optical sensors, plus GPS and laser technology to capture the data you need 
to assess the road and its surroundings. This information is then sent to Ivy's innovative AI road network intelligence platform. And within 24 hours, road maintenance crews and engineers are provided with photos and 3D point clouds rich with data they need to address the most pressing problems. Road crews know where to focus their resources, react more efficiently, and prevent further deterioration. With access to Ivy's web application, you can visualize entire road networks filled with detailed information on the condition of the road. Use Ivy's web application to switch seamlessly between data formats and get a better understanding of your road network. Bird's eye photos to help you to better understand and inspect road defects. Point clouds enable high accuracy measurements of the road infrastructure and our AI extraction of road fixtures allows you to see clear and detailed information about problems on the road. Problems that may otherwise be overlooked or invisible to the human eye. The next revolution in road maintenance is predictive maintenance and it's right around the corner. Predictive maintenance is the future we all should be aiming for and the future Ivy sees for Texas roads and beyond. Ivy will be headquartered in Austin, Texas because it is time we joined all of you on the frontier of advanced technology solving our everyday problems. Yes, so this is Ivy, and uh, hope, hope, hope to hear some good questions. All right, who has a question from the audience? I'm, of course, the privileged guy uh, who can ask all the questions that I have, but maybe you have one. Okay, I'm going to go with mine. Uh, how big of a proportion of Tallinn have you mapped uh, with Ivy? And uh, how big of a hard drive do you need to map all of it? Well, quite a lot. Uh, uh, for one kilometer, we need uh, around four gigabytes. So one kilometer, four gigabytes. Yeah, yeah. Right. So quite a lot of uh, hard drive in this case, yeah. And how much of Tallinn have you detailedly mapped? Uh, I'm not quite sure, but uh, in percentage-wise, but we have covered uh, the main uh, streets and all the uh, sub areas and like the center of uh, Tallinn. So probably not all, but uh, a lot, quite big portion of it. Right. And how did your work in Tallinn help you in scaling up? Well, it helped a lot uh, because Tallinn as a city has a lot of uh, information which we also gather already in place so we can compare it uh, to uh, we can compare our data to the data from Tallinn city and this helps us to develop our technology so it could be more precise and uh, we can uh, be sure that the data that we are gathering is uh, uh, in good precision and we can use it uh, in everywhere around the world. Uh, we actually have a question for the mayor that's a bit unorthodox during this uh, session, but uh, why not? Uh, Mr. Kulvart, if I can uh, uh, ask the question that one of our uh, viewers has posted, would a digital twin from Ivy be useful for the city? I mean, should Ivy scan Tallinn completely and uh, provide a digital model? Would you find that successful in maintaining uh, the roads? Uh, so, so actually this year uh, we uh, invest uh, uh, more for the creating uh, digital twin of Tallinn. And we understand that uh, this is not only uh, streets. Uh, we have to go also inside, underground. Because one of our problem is uh, that actually uh, we don't have a clear picture uh, what we have on the ground. I, I understand this is maybe uh, more uh, complex uh, technology uh, to go uh, underground. That this is uh, one of our uh, next aim to have also a picture underground and uh, uh, create whole picture of the Tallinn streets, uh, of course. Uh, and uh, this work is uh, also very important for us for Tallinn 
we receive also uh, quite uh, uh, important information. But uh, uh, our understanding is uh, larger. Uh, we have to go uh, underground and we have to use uh, this whole picture uh, to um, integrate uh, to the uh, decision-making process. Uh, this is a, a final aim that uh, uh, digital twins uh, we need it for uh, decision making uh, process. And you, if you're asking, uh, so uh, uh, do if we are on this way? Yes, we are on this way. And uh, for, for this uh, year, for this year budget, uh, we also in, in, in invested uh, like uh, uh, quite a huge uh, sum uh, to develop uh, this system. Thank you very much. Do you have uh, a version 2 of Ivy that can go underground? Well, actually, I would add that Ivy has a plan in future to go also underground as well. So, yes, this is the direction we are also looking into. So, Ivy with a little drill machine and uh, going underground. Ground penetration radar, but mm. <laughs> yeah. That's, but, uh, but drilling is also interesting. That's right? more, a more delicate approach yeah, to it, yeah. I guess. Thank you very much. I'm afraid we've exhausted our time with Ivy. And applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Clemen is developing autonomous delivery vehicles. Now, what have they been doing in Tallinn? Marta will explain. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marta, and this is Clevan. Clevan is a technology company which develops uh, and manufactures uh, autonomous delivery vehicles. And why do we do that? There are three main challenges that we want to tackle with our solution. The first one is that um, there is a shortage of drivers worldwide. The second one is that um, the operational costs of last mile delivery are very high. And the third, last but not least, is that uh, there are limited options for companies to electrify the, their last mile. And how do we solve that? We solve that with Clemon One. Clemon One is our third generation all electric vehicle, which delivers uh, packages, groceries, restaurant orders um, on public roads. And how do we do that? Um, well, the vehicles uh, driving on public roads today are teleoperated, but step by step we want to raise the level of autonomy, so in the future the vehicles uh, will drive most of the time autonomously, and then um, there will be only one uh, teleoperator who can supervise five to ten vehicles um, simultaneously. So we don't need any more ten drivers, but we only need one teleoperator. And uh, doing this, we will bring down the uh, labor costs up to 80 to 90 percent. And, as already mentioned, the vehicle is all electric, so it's uh, zero emission and uh, noise-free. So it's a very good solution uh, for uh, busy city environments to, uh, to test this kind of solution. And what do we do in Tallinn? Uh, Clemon is already in Old Town. We have a cooperation agreement with the uh, with, uh, city of Tallinn, uh, so that we are able to test our vehicle in Tallinn's Old Town. Um, Tallinn is old town is a UNESCO heritage site, so there are very strict regulations um, for regular vans to enter. They can only enter uh, between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. in the morning, uh, but um, based on our cooperation agreement, we can go there 24-7, and we can go enter also the restricted areas um, and deliver DHL Express uh, Estonian packages uh, to their business customers. And hopefully we can prolong the cooperation agreement. And let's have a quick look of the video as well. So here you can see how um, our vehicle is driving uh, in the uh, Tallinn city center area. And as, um, as you can see, we can also drive during the winter time with a heavy snow. We have been testing the vehicle since, uh, since August in Tallinn area. And here you can see how we are entering the old town. pedestrian area going to deliver the uh, package and the customer comes enters the pin code takes the package and voila that's how easy it is So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. 
Do we have any questions from the audience? I'm going to ask one. Uh, so what has been the practical use case of testing your <coughs> cute little uh, delivery vehicles in Tallinn? Mm -hmm. uh, we have two uh, corporations going on in Tallinn with uh, DPD Group and with DHL Express um, Estonia Group. We are um, delivering uh, business customer packages uh, since uh, summer already. And um, it's, it's, Tallinn is it's not a metropolis city, but it still has enough um, intensity in this um, um, city area. So we can test our vehicle, test our service, get feedback from, uh, from the customers, as well as um, our teleoperators can gain valuable experience uh, driving in a city center. And Tallinn has everything. Tallinn has buses, trams, trolley buses, bicycles, uh, Huge piles of snow. Exactly. Yeah. And traffic jams even. So uh, we can test our vehicle in, in various situations. What are your scale-up plans? Huge. <laughs> I wouldn't have yeah. expected anything less. Yeah. Uh, we are actually on public roads already in Lithuania, in Belgium. Um, in both places, we are delivering groceries to private customers. Uh, we opened our U.S. Um, headquarters in Texas, Dallas-Fort Worth in September. So Europe, U.S., the whole world. Wow. Yes. Impressive. Well, good luck uh, with all of that. Thank you Thank so you. much. If we don't have any more questions, an applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thanks. We have one more robot company and they are called Ten Lines. They make road stripes for smart cities and they're currently pitching, as I understand, for foreign investors somewhere far from here. So because they can't be with us, they sent us a video. Hello. Ten Lines is developing autonomous robots for the payment marketing industry. Our mission is to ensure the traffic safety of the future smart cities. I am Dharma, I am the CEO and co-founder of Ten Lines, and I've been in the striping industry for more than 12 years. As an owner of the biggest parking lot striping company in Estonia, I was always trying to find automation and better ways of doing the business. There's thousands of striping companies out there that are providing striping service every day. But the problem is that it is almost entirely manual work. About 70% of the time is spent on measuring and pre-marking. And only after this manual preparation work is done, the actual lines are painted. But this is what the customers are paying for. The methods and technology today are really inefficient. Hello, my name is Janna. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Ten Lines. I have been working in the IT sector for over 10 years automating manual tasks. My background is in big data, artificial intelligence and also robotics technologies from various startups and projects. Ten Lines is developing groundbreaking autonomous robots for payment marking. These robots can do the job multiple times faster than the current technologies and can operate 24-7. Each robot produces almost 2 tons of CO2 per year. In the future smart cities, the lines should be smart as well. They should be communicating with the infrastructure and the other vehicles. We believe that our technology will enable a safe traffic environment for autonomous cars and pedestrians. With Talent City, we have been working together to figure out what the future smart city will look like. For example, the, our robots can do the striping during the night time and in the morning the strike will be fresh the Italian Innovation Project has given us an excellent opportunity to test and develop our robots in the real smart city environment. We have been developing our robots here in Tehnapol for a few years and now we are ready to actually strike lines in the city of Tallinn. With the support of the Tallinn Innovation Program, we have been able to speed up development and move faster to the future where manual, inefficient and dangerous work is being done by autonomous intelligent robots. Thank you. So what can I say? If you have a cool idea, uh, and not simply an idea, if you have a product and a service ready that you think needs scaling up so that you can conquer the world, 
Tallinn has you covered. Come test in Tallinn, look at uh, the conditions on the website. You're more than welcome to change the world starting from here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up the official program. Now, for those of you who are physically present here, it's time to go and play outside with the cute gadgets that are lined up in front of the house. Um, if you're nearby and following us from a location virtually that is close, you have more motivation to come by and talk to all the entrepreneurs and people that can further answer your questions. Thank you so much for being with us. Hope to see you in Tallinn soon.